recording. Okay, the new version 2.0 manual has been rewritten and the reason it's the way it is, the way, reason that you install it into the software is because we can update this manual. So if we have to make corrections or we have to make additions, it's kind of a live manual. Now it's still a PDF file so you can print it, but the way you get to it is go to help and open manual. So, you know, once you click on that, this PDF is going to open up for you. Now, there's this little link over here. See the little lock? And you should have something similar to these things in your Adobe Reader. And there's this little double paper thing. And if I click on that, it gives me pages, right? Well, that's the long way to go about things. A lot of you will do that. But if I click on the next one down, it's like a little bookmark. And when I open that, I get these neat menus. They should open automatically, but if they don't, that's how you get to them. It depends on what you did in the last one. Now, if you keep going down, there's an index. I don't have the right manual installed. I have an older um, manual installed, but there's an index, and it's listed. Chapter 9 is listed. You know, there's more chapters than what I'm showing here because this is an old manual. And the way that you find this manual to install it in your software is going to be on the Generations website. You log into your members area. Let me go ahead and log in real quick. And you're going to go to the version, you know, Generation Software Owners and version 2 downloads. When you click on that link, here's the full install, here's the documentation, that's the new manual. So you're going to just go ahead and download this manual, and it's an EXE file, so you're going to install it. And since my manual seems to be the wrong one, I should go ahead and just do this while I have you guys here. So there's my manual, it's downloading. The manual's quite large, it's in color, and you are able to print this from your PDF file, but this comes down as an EXE file and installs into your software. So anytime that we happen to update this, you can just install a new manual. And I'm going to overwrite my manual. So now my manual is going to be in you know, my generations program. I go to help and open manual and hopefully my computer will behave because we've had some issues and I guess it's going to ignore that right now. But, you know, I'm able to open this manual up. So let me go ahead and open it this way. There we go. So you can see, you know, the full manual. Okay, there's my index. And, you know, you can scroll through the index and it says, you know, kerning 7.5. And Oh, I'm going to go through this whole thing again. Hold on, let me close this down because it's just kind of a pain. So kerning, 7-5, that means it's in Chapter 7. Just click on that plus symbol. And it's on page 5, so you can kind of click on that, and there's 7-5, and it's talking about kerning here. Okay, or you can just use your scroll wheel and scroll through this. But the manual has all been redone. There's more things in this manual, of course, not just the new features, but maybe a little more clear instructions. Okay, um, no problem, Jenny. Okay, so I'm going to close down the manual. I wanted to show you where to find that because the first section of the manual talks about setting up your new software, how to set your import and exports. And the reason is... Once I set that, that's going to be my default. <coughs> we have a couple of options on this one. These are my import and export icons. I also have a file, you know, import, and then you see the two options immediately, open DST or EXP for commercial or open formats. Same thing with export, export to DST, save formats or batch export. Okay, so that's the menu option. These two icons are set to a default, so you have to kind of set them. So if I want to import something like formats, like PES and XXX, then I'm going to click on that arrow and choose open formats for the first time. Then I'm going to go ahead and um, select the design that I want to import. And I'm just going to kind of find this one real quick. So there's a design I want to import, and you can see it kind of defaults to all of the formats, right? And if you want to be picky, you can pick the format that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. 
and there's my design. So we're going to look at how to edit this design, and we're going to do some real basic things. First, um, I'm going to look at this in 3D, and, you know, I don't have trims in this, you know, and I'm going to want to put some trims in here, especially if my machine is capable of trimming. So that's one thing. Uh, you know, the color thing real quick, like, you know, I might want this to be black. So I can find that purple color, click on the purple, and just come down here real quick and select the black color chip, right? That's a quick enough fix, right? Now, I've got all of these things here, you know, like I have this funny little you know, section here, it looks like nothing, but what it is is actually these white things, right? Those white dots. And if I come up here, you know, these are going to be like the jumps in between. They're not really stitches. They're really kind of jumps. Um, you know, so I have to decide what do I, what do I want to make them. They're jumps because they're small enough maybe. That might be a travel stitch. You know, but they're underneath, so I'm not going to really worry about these, right? And there's a logic to these. They're doing well. And, you know, that's all good. But, you know, I come down here and there's the yellow sections. Those are doing good, too. And these white sections, you know, they've got some issues because you know, they have all these jumps in here. And I might want to put a trim in there, especially with the newer machines that are capable of trimming when a jump is so long. And so that we can see these a little bit better, I'm going to go ahead and change them to blue. So let me kind of zoom in here. You can see what I'm talking about. See those? jumps in between, well, we're going to deal with that in a minute. You know, I would want to put a trim in there, but one of the basic questions I get is how do I resize a design that I imported? And that's very, very simple. I left click on it and watch my stitch count. Right now my stitch count on this is 1,000 or 11,150 stitches. So if I just drag this bigger and say, yeah, go ahead and make that bigger, my stitch count has not changed, despite the fact this has significantly increased in size. Let me go ahead and undo that. But there's a way to do that and apply stitch processing. So I'm going to come down here, left click, make sure it's selected with the black bounding boxes, and come down here and left click on this resize icon. See where my mouse is? Here's my mouse. Follow my mouse. It's that yellow resize icon. And, you know, maybe I want to make this, you know, 150 millimeters, and when I tab, you know, my size adjusts here. And I could just say, okay, except I'll be in the same boat. I need to come down here and click on Apply Stitch Processing. And then simply say, okay. And then say, yes, I want to go ahead and apply this to these locked areas. And now my stitch count is... 14,511. Now I have some funny little things here I might want to look at, right? But even those are not that big of a deal. We're going to cover how to kind of edit stitch by stitch if we need to or make some changes as well. So where these are are on these pink areas right here. See the pink area? You know, there's the pink section over here in my film strip. And I'll go ahead and make this a little bigger so you can see too. Okay, so there's the pink section that's giving me some problems, right? And if we zoom in on it, you can see I've got some funny little stitches here. Well, if I like the way this looks and I don't want to make significant changes to this area, I can just edit those stitch points. So let's look at editing those stitch points. To edit those stitch points, I'm going to go out of 3D view. I'm going to come past this quick view over into needle penetrations. Okay, see the needle points right down there? And I can't really do anything with those needle penetrations until I come back over and click on edit mode. Then that's going to let me left click on that and you can see the little red plus symbol that shows up there, a red X, right? So if I left click on this needle point that's giving me a problem, I can mouse over when I get the bullseye cursor left click and hold that mouse button down and just move these points, you know, left click to select them, mouse over to get the bullseye, press and hold your left mouse button, and I can just move any points that are giving me some problems. And that should resolve my issue if I have just a handful of little points that, you know, for whatever reason this fill didn't want to behave, right? 
and I can move those points anywhere I want. I can also delete them. Okay, but for right now, we just wanted to clean that up. And now let's get out of needle penetration and out of our edit mode. And let's look what that looks like. So we've got that all cleaned up, and it's looking pretty good. I might want to look over here, you know, clean up over here maybe. But all in all, that's turned out to be pretty good. That's using your needle penetration. So that's going to be this little needle with the dot here. You know, when I'm out of 3D view and I'm in needle penetrations, I see every little stitch point. See? And, you know, I'm looking over here and I'm thinking, oh, you know, I wonder if that's really going to be a gap. I might have to look at that. But nonetheless, I would handle this a little differently because that would drive me crazy trying to move all those points, right? Then I did just those handful of points. But in needle penetration view, I see each needle penetration, each point. It's when I go to edit mode that I'm allowed to left click and select those points. Okay, and then I can, I can even left click and drag around all of these points, mouse over it, and move them. All right, so I have a lot of options. Now, I can also left click on one of these points and use the up and down arrow keys to scroll through this design. If I happen to hold the control key as I'm doing this, scrolling using the up and down arrow key, I can select these individual designs here. until I'm just done selecting these stitches. And then I can move them or press the delete key on my keyboard to remove them from the design. So let's go ahead and undo that. And I'm just going to left click off the side and I'm going to go out of this mode now. So you know I'm back in 3D view and I can see that's probably going to show there. And you know, and this doesn't look quite how I want it to look, even though I'm zoomed in. But you know, let's take a look at what we can do with those yellow pieces. And so I'm going to click on the yellow color chip, and there's my two pieces, right? You can see there's the jump in between them. Well, let's kind of zoom in here, and you know, there's the jump in between them. And I'm going to go out of 3D view. It's harder to see, but these two pieces are together. So if I want to just deal with those two pieces, I can click on the pink color chip. That selects all of the pink areas. Hold on, let me go out so you can see. See all the pink areas are flashing? And I can come up to the top of my stitch sequence viewer and click on the eye to hide them. Then I can come down and I can click on the black. And I can hold the control key and click on the blue color chips. And I can come up to the top, and I can click on the eye at the top and hide them as well. So now all I'm dealing with is these yellow pieces. And I've got this jump here that I want to deal with. So let's take a look at what we can do with this jump. If I use the needle penetration view, see all my needle points? And I use edit mode. You know, this design, for some reason, has dropped a stitch in the middle, and I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to left-click on that and delete it. Now, that's taking me back to this stitch, right? And if I delete that, I come over to here. If I delete that, I'm coming over to there. So I don't want to delete too many things, so let's undo and undo. I really just want to get to this stitch. And... I want to trim between this and this. So what I can do is mouse over this little at red X that I've selected while I'm in needle penetration mode and edit mode, and I can right click, and I can come down to replace stitches by normal jump trim or a sequin if you have the pro version. If you don't have the pro version, you won't see that. So I'm going to replace this with a trim. Okay, now, it didn't split these areas, but if I have a machine that can trim, 
<coughs> then it's going to trim there. If I don't have a machine that's going to trim, it's just going to place a jump, and I don't have to worry about any funny little stitches getting dropped in there, right? So, you know, the way to do that, let me go back here, is I left click on the stitch, and I make sure it's the stitch I want. See the stitch? I make sure it's the stitch I want. I wait till I get the bullseye cursor. I right click and go to replace stitches by a trim. So, you know, there's my trim, right? So let's go to one-on-one. So now at least I've got a trim in between those two pieces. So that means this piece could be the same thing. So I'm going to come up here and see my yellow section. It's only one. I'm going to click on the eye in the cell. See my mouse? In the cell, I'm just going to click on that eye right there and come down to the blue section and click on the X eye to turn those on. I'm still in needle penetration view, so I'm going to come up and zoom in here. And, you know, I might pick these sections first. Now, I've got the same thing. I've got this funny little stitch because these jumps are pretty long. So I'm going to left click on that and press delete. And that sends me kind of back to where it belongs. So I'm going to use the, you know, up arrow to see where it's jumping from. And it's jumping from there to that blue one. So this is the stitch that I want to right click on, replace stitches by trim. And it's going to be the same thing in here. Now these might be a little bit harder to pick out. You might want to zoom in a little more and, you know, say, well, you know, I think it's maybe this stitch here, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to use the up and down arrow keys and there we go. There's our jump, right? Right click. And if you missed like I did, just go back and make sure that's the stitch. You could even probably delete that stitch because it uh, seems to be a um, lock stitch and just say, well, you might not want to delete the lock stitch, but let's go ahead and we'll, we'll leave it there. We'll say, you know, I could replace the stitches by a trim there too. And even if my machine doesn't trim, those are going to be much cleaner jumps, right? Because you saw how if it was a little bit too long that it tended to place a little drop stitch in things. So if you have to clean up a design that has some funny little drop stitches, find that last one and say trim. You could put jump, but it's going to be the same thing. You know, if you have a drop stitch, you're going to have a drop stitch, right? So there we go. I'm just right click. Once you get the right stitch, right click and replace stitches by trim. All right, so I'm not going to do all of these blue ones, but you can see the little scissors now because I'm in this view, right? And I would finish the rest of those, but you can see the little jumps in, or the little drop stitches in those jumps, right? So <laughs> we've gotten those taken care of, and, you know, most of my design is invisible. If I had a really busy design, like this has a lot of pieces to it, going through and clicking on the little eye next to each one of these would drive you crazy. So instead, come up to the blue arrow at the top here, click on it, and say select all invisible. It selects everything that's invisible, and you come over here and click on the eye at the top. It's got a red X through it, and just click on it to make everything visible. Now let's turn off our needle penetration, and let's turn off our edit mode. Okay, so this is what we've got. It's gotten cleaned up quite a bit, but I still don't really like the fill that's in those yellow sections. So we've looked at how you can resize properly. We've looked at how you can insert trims. Even if your machine isn't going to trim, it's still going to be a cleaner jump, right? You, you know, changing colors is not that big of a deal, but changing a fill or fixing a fill pattern like these yellow pieces here, man, that's going to be a little bit harder. You know, it's not real hard. It's just we have to think for a second. When the person who created this design created it, they had pull compensation in here. So if I apply a fill to this, then I have to remember that it's already got pull compensation. Okay? But, you know, I could apply a fill to these till the cows came home and nothing's going to happen. You know, look, if I say satin... You know, nothing. I could go into outline view and pull these things all over the place, fill all these holes. Nothing will happen. 
And the reason is because this is locked. So if you look, follow my mouse, see the little lock symbol right below the I next to the cell? That indicates it is locked and not editable. So I need to unlock it. So when I unlock it, I just click on that lock and it opens up. And, you know, your first instinct is to come over here and generate, but if you look down here, other than I've already changed this, you'll have no stitch type in here. So you have to pick a stitch type. You know, I want a complex fill. There we go. Now remember I said we had to watch for pull compensation. See what's going on here? Those are way beyond because of the pull compensation, right? And everywhere that's a hole, it's going to become much smaller. So, and also because, you know, the way it saw some of these outlines, we might have to clean up a little bit, but not a lot. But one of the things I need to do is deal with this pull compensation that got at it. And that's really easy to do. I have now unlocked this and applied a fill type to it. I'm going to have to clean up down here, and we can do that. <coughs> and... You know, the trim thing will not work here because that was connected, so now it's made a connection, and we're going to fix that. But let's deal with the pull compensation. Come up to your settings or press the space bar on your keyboard with this section that you just changed selected, and click on that and say, okay, complex fill. Remove the compensation and click apply. Okay, do you see what happened? Now those are much better. You know, the compensation looks a little more correct. You know, I might look at these holes depending on, you know, how picky I want to be, but right now this is editable. If I go to View Outline and I go to Edit Mode, you know, the first thing I can do is say, well, you know, that's a little bit too far out there. Uh, you know, these were supposed to be a little more rounded. Let's pull one of these down and delete and pull those around, and I could fix this any way I wanted to. Might not want to pull it down quite that much, but you get the idea, right? And the same thing here, I want to leave some compensation there, but you know, hey, I also want these polka dots to show, right? And I want the polka dots to show in a nice round manner. So deleting some of those points and right-clicking on that curve or the space in between gives it a little more rounder appearance. Okay, so let's go ahead and generate, and there we go, but I still have a problem now. Remember that white piece we put a jump in? Well, you know, when we unlocked it because those pieces were together, it really made like a little section. See that little section there? Well, no big, I'm going to turn off our, or hide the, the black section so you can see it better. I'm going to go into view outline, and there we go. You know, there's that section that we need to get rid of. Well, no big deal. Remember last time we were dealing with editing, so we just go to Outline, Divide with a Line, but you have to be in View Outline Mode, okay? I'm in View Outline Mode, Divide with a Line from the menu, and I'm really just going to go like this, left click, left click, left click, left click, press Enter, Escape, and I can right click off to the side and, you know, come back and right click on the yellow, and there's the piece. If you can't find it, don't worry, just hit generate and come down to the yellow section and there is the piece we want rid of. See, it's right there, but right here in the film strip it's really easy to find, so just left click on it, press control, press delete, <coughs> and that section is now gone. And don't forget to, if you hid these black pieces like I just did, to unhide them. All right, so that's kind of the nuts and bolts about editing. Now, once I unlock something, like if I unlocked these pieces, this little connector here would become whatever embroidery be because it's seeing it as, you know, kind of an outline. So bear that in mind, you might have to split them. Okay, Janet, Jan is asking if you can hold control and pick them all at once, um, if you want to move the same, I, I'm not sure what you're saying, Janet, when I was, when I was moving, I'm not sure what you're talking about, let me, let me ask you, okay. Um, Molly, 
is asking if this works with purchase designs that become locked. If you have a digitizer that can lock them so that you can't edit, no. But yeah, in most cases you're going to bring in a design like this and unlock it and you can edit this, okay? Molly's also asking what's the ideal maximum or minimum um, to, you know, resize. And you can see here, you know, see these are satin stitched, right? And these little polka dots here, they're satin stitched. So 20% is the maximum. If you can stitch process, then 20%. If not, you know, you're probably about 10 to 15%. If you can unlock these and change the fill type, like these little blue dots, you know, I can just click on that section and say, uh, you know, well, I'd have to clean it up. It might be just worth it to make new dots, but you'll kind of get the idea. Like I can click on those and change them. Or, you know, I'll click on this black section here and I can say, well, you know, I unlocked it. And, you know, let's change this to, you know, okay, satin. And, oh, you know, I forgot it to take out the compensation. And let's make it a satin fill. Oops, sorry. Satin fill, and just so you can see the pattern, I'll pick that. And I'm going to change it to blue so you can see. So if you have something that's wider satin than it should be, you can do something like that. Um, Brenda, the pro is actually going to bump over to the commercial software. So if you want to give me an email, and I can let you know tomorrow and, and check and see what that would be for you, okay? All right, so I'm hoping that, you know, working with the formats now makes a little bit more sense to you. Um, one of the reasons that you have to unlock it is really simple is I don't know what this is really. It looks like it could be satin, but if you really look at this, it's got, you know, some funny little things here. Like, it's actually two pieces of satin, right? And then you can see, like, these little things that are kind of around it. Well, you know, that could be a line. It could be a, a command. You know, it could be a lot of things, right? It could be a little blurb in the, the actual original outline. So in order to deal with this, I have to unlock it, and I might have to do a little bit of editing on this, like, this one looks a little funny, like it's got that little line. So if I unlock this and say, whoa, you know, let's make this satin. I wanted to make it satin, sorry. You know, see, anything you see on that flashing outline, it's going to show up there. So I, I've got to clean that up, right? Um, you know, first thing I would probably do is say, well, you know, underlays, okay, but no compensation because it already had compensation. The next thing I'm going to do is take a look at, ah, you know, how do you fix this? Well, you know, you've got these funny little outlines. So you guys know outline, view, go to outline, view, and, you know, it'll adjust it with an arc. Go from here to here and select that funny little thing and adjust it with an arc, right? Or adjust it with the line, you know, whatever you need to do. Like I have that little funny point there now, but you know, cleaned it up a little bit. And the same thing here, do I really need it to look like that? Probably not. Let's clean this up. You know, you have the editing tools to clean it up. Press escape, and I'll show you a real quick trick. When you have something that you kind of had to clean up a little bit like this, you have to reset your blocks, satin blocks. Remember the satin blocks we talked about? So if I have to clean something up like this, and it's a little bit more cleaning than I thought. I might want to say complex and then go back to satin and I'll get a cleaner satin. And if you guys remember from the lettering, uh, let me go back and take out the compensation. If you remember from the lettering, when you get a corner like this on satin, you go to view angle and then angle from the menu or right click and say edit corner and let's come around this corner and let's miter it. And there you go. So you're able to clean up, but you have to unlock and assign a fill type. So, all right, do you guys have any quick questions? Uh, Marilyn's asked me why I removed the compensation. And the reason is if you look at, um, you know, if I click on this, for example, let me kind of zoom in. See how that outline is? I mean, besides the fact it's underneath, you know, the uh, yellow, let me click on the yellow here and hide it. 
Okay, here's, see that, you know, outline around it? Well, when I bring a design in, the compensation that's in the design that the digitizer already put in is, you know, going to be seen as part of the outline. It's seeing the stitch data. It's not seeing the original outline. It's seeing the stitch data because that's what this design is. So the compensation is already added from the digitizer. So if I would say, you know, let's change this. I'm going to unlock it and let's change it to a complex fill. See how much beefier it got. Let me undo so you can see it. It goes from there to there because I've now added compensation on top of the original compensation. So does that make more sense, Marilyn? So, you know, I don't really need the original, I don't really need to add more compensation unless the design needs it. No, uh, Marilyn, it's not possible to make the compensation different from the stitch color. At this point, when I bring a design in that's in a format, it is no longer an outline. It is a stitch point by stitch point by stitch point design. It's a bunch of machine codes that tell it when to stop, drop the needle, and pick it back up, and change colors. Okay? And, um, Christina, on, I'm kind of running out of time on this webinar, but if you go to the um, website, we have a lettering video, I believe it's up there, where if you go to support and generations technique webinars, then um, lettering, I think I show it in lettering there. If not, um, you know, it's in the lettering tools, okay? All right, so... Um, Carol's asking when I say bring in a format design, am I talking about DST? I'm talking about DST, EXP, XXX, PES, JEF, any format that goes to a machine is now a stitch data format. It's not an outline. Your GEN file, GEN file, is an outline file. Your machine won't sew the GEN file because it's outline, but your machine will sew the PES format because it's stitch data, okay? So, um, Christina, send me a note too, and if not, I have another video. I know I have a video somewhere on that, okay? Um, it should have been on the site, Jan. If you look, it says, yeah, editing a format file, 721.16. You know, so these are the dates. You know, every once in a while we have to change it as something comes up, but these are the dates um, of, you know, the webinars coming up. Next one's going to be about building blocks, okay? Um, if you want to see the webinar recordings, go to support. Under the support tab is Generations Technique Webinars. When I click on image control or one of these, you know, like this video will be right here probably tomorrow. So when I click on one of these links, it takes me to the video. And I'll show you guys a quick trick. If you want to see this, you know, click on the play button and then see this setting. Let me kind of close that down. See the setting? You can say, okay, um, you know, quality, you know, 1080p HD, that's going to give it real good quality. You can go to the YouTube page, and then you can click on this link or this little square and go full screen, okay? And, you know, so that's how you can see. These are all in HD, okay? So if you have an HD screen, you know, go to these settings and tell it that, you know, your setting is 1080p HD or whatever you're capable of seeing. But this is where you're going to find these under support on the website, Generations Technique Webinars. All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and let's stop the recording so the recording is not too large and can process pretty quick for you. And